First of all, I would like to welcome you all in the lecture series of basic electrical engineering. In this session, I'm going to discuss the construction details of three-phase induction motor. Let's get started. First of all, I would like to explain what are the major components of three-phase induction motor. Remember, construction is nothing but the components. For example, you are constructing a building. You can say concrete, pillars, cement, sand, etc. All are actually called the components, material. So that is why you have to explain about different components. I think you are understanding. Moving on to the discussion. The three-phase induction motor comprises of two important components. The first component is called as stator and another one is called rotor. Remember, rotor is a rotating part where the stator is known as stationary part. Moreover, the rotor and stator is separated by a small air gap. Everybody can observe the diagram here. So this is a typical view of stator. Can you observe here? So we have the outer covering called yoke. Uh, then uh, we have the slotted uh, stator core with the stator winding. Stator winding can be done either in star connection or delta connection, depends on the requirement. When I talk about the rotor, so we, as we can see, there are different varieties of rotor. I will let you know what are the different type of rotor. This is one of the typical view. So you can see the copper bars, which is connected between end rings. And also the bar, rotor bar, or you can see this is a copper bar, uh, which is arranged in a skew symmetry fashion. And uh, this is another view. So you can see the outer covering that is actually called a stator, uh, where three-phase supply will be given at stator. The moving part is called a rotor. Yes, this is a moving part, mechanical moving part. Okay, moving on to the discussion. Now I would like to discuss the details of stator. As I mentioned, stator is a stationary part. How about the construction? Yeah, it is just like a hollow and cylindrical core. You can see it's a hollow and the cylindrical shape. Also, it is having a number of slots where winding will be connected over them. Moreover, uh, what is the material which is made up of stator? Yes, the stator is made up of one special type of material called silicon steel. How it is arranged? It is just arranged like a laminated fashion. Why it is laminated fashion? Because the eddy current loss has to be minimized. You know, uh, because of eddy current, there will be bulk amount of heat losses. You need to minimize eddy current as much as possible. So it is better to go for silicon steel lamination to minimize the eddy current loss. One more thing I want to ask you is that why you need to use specifically use the silicon steel because silicon steel has very less value of hysteresis. Okay, if the value of hysteresis is very less, obviously hysteresis loss is also going down. So because of these two matter of fact, we need to use silicon steel with the lamination. So when I talk about the insulation, yes, of course, we need to provide the suitable insulation at the stator. So at the every slot, we need to provide the insulation. You can see the slotted stator core. Okay, there are different slots. Very clearly, you can see slot. Also, the stator winding. Winding can be connected either star connection or delta connection. Depends on the requirement. Also, these conductors are properly interconnected in the form of either balanced star or delta connection. Make sure that it should be balanced. Fine. So this is regarding the stator. I would like to discuss about the rotor. You know, rotor is a moving part. You can see one typical view of rotor. How about the rotor? Based on the rotor, there are two types of uh, induction motor. You can divide induction motor based on the rotor construction. There are two types. One is squirrel cage rotor. Another one is called as face wound rotor. It can also call it as a slippering type rotor. So the typical view of the squirrel cage rotor is shown here. This is actually the squirrel cage rotor. We can see the end rings. Two end rings are available, which is having the cylindrical shape. End ring one and here also another end ring. There are two end rings available. In between end rings, what you are doing, you are connecting the rotor bar between the end rings. It is already welded here. You can see the welding. Fine. This is the way how the squirrel cage induction motor has been constructed. If I talk about the phase bound rotor, this is actually the structure of phase bound rotor. Here you can connect with the external resistance. I will let you know the detail diagram. This is the practical view which I have taken some websites. Okay. Moving on to the further discussion. As you can observe, we are going to discuss the squirrel cage type rotor. 
two type of plotter we already discussed. I'm going to discuss about squirrel case type plotter. So here it is very clear that there are two endering. So this is endering one. Okay, endering one. This is another rendering. It is very clear. In between, uh, you have connected the rotor conductor. It is made up of with the copper only, copper. Usually copper or aluminum, but uh, copper is a better choice. Copper. Copper is a convenient choice. It is just like a skewed arrangement you can see in between. So it is connected with the shaft. Okay. Why skewing? Because uh, the it uh, ensure the noiseless operation and uh, it uh, makes sure that the torque produced in the motor will be uniform. Moreover, the magnetic locking will be prevented. So magnetic locking is also known as coging. Okay. If the stator and the rotor teeth are matched with each other, then it is going to lock. Induction motor will not move further. To prevent that, uh, we are arranging like a skewed shape, actually, skewed arrangement. Otherwise, there, there may be magnetic locking due to that motor could not move further. Fine. As we discussed, uh, the arrangement like uh, the copper or aluminum rotor bars are used, which is connected uh, between two ender rings. Also, uh, you can see the slot of that particular rotor. That is also like a steel lamination. We are providing the steel lamination. Also, all the bars are welded at both the ends. You can see the enderings. There are two enderings available. This is endering one and this is endering two. So, you are connected uh, the copper bar between two enderings. Also, just like a short circuit structure, a closed structure is formed here. Furthermore, uh, it is a closed and packed structure. We cannot add any external resistance for the improvement of starting purpose or speed control. We cannot do that. So that is a peculiarity of the squirrel case type rotor. Okay. Uh, the, if you type, type, talk about the efficiency, okay, efficiency is very high here. Okay. Efficiency of the, skew, the uh, squirrel case rotor is very much high. Uh, one more important thing I want to tell you, why it is called a squirrel cage rotor. You can see the skin part of squirrel, the arrangement that a copper bar, it is just like a skin part of the squirrel. That is why it is called a squirrel cage rotor. Okay, just for your understanding purpose, you can remember. You may ask, you may think that why it is called a squirrel shape. So see, the copper bar is just like uh, the shape of the squirrel. Fine. Yeah. As I mentioned, uh, the, the external resistance cannot be added for the improvement of starting torque. Therefore, if I talk about the squirrel cage rotor, the starting torque is very poor, very less. Also, uh, why it is called uh, squirrel cage means the structure is similar to, uh, it's a cage-like structure. Okay, cage-like structure also, it uh, resembles the skin cover, skin part of the squirrel. That is why it is known as squirrel cage rotor. Can you tell me the application of squirrel cage rotor? Yes, uh, the squirrel cage induction motor, we can call it a squirrel cage rotors are applicable uh, where the lathe machines, then drilling machine, then water pumps, irrigation water pumps and the industrial drives. Okay, these are the various applications of squirrel cage rotor. If I talk about the lathe, it's a constant speed application. Still, the, uh, we do not require any continuous variation of the speed. Also, the pump also, we do not require the variable speed motor. For that purpose, we can we can go for the squirrel cage rotor itself. Let us move on. The discussion on the slippering type rotor or slippering induction motor. So, slippering induction motor is also known as bound rotor. That is a synonym. Uh, let us move on to the further discussion. Uh, you can see the structure of the slippering type rotor. So this is a structure of slippering. These are the slippering. It is very clear that we have the slippering. Okay. Then uh, we require a carbon brush as well. And then we have a shaft. And uh, we can see the rotor winding also. Rotor winding. How it is connected. So it is very clear that you can observe the rotor winding. It is connected in star fashion. Right. So the rotor winding is directly connected to the slippering. Okay, because you can see the first point is connected to the first part of slippering, the second point is connected to the second part of slippering, and the third one is connected to the third part of slippering. And uh, we are using the brush also, brush. Through brush, you are connecting with the external resistance. So there are different advantages of external resistance. I will let you know what are the advantages. The advantages of uh, the external resistance, you can see uh, we have 
the stator okay external supply then the rotor winding is arranged in this fashion the rotor winding is connected to the slip ring and brushes from the through the brushes it is connected to the external resistance okay uh, here the advantages of using external resistance are number one it increases the starting torque moreover now uh, the speed can be easily controlled because in case of uh, uh, induction motor the starting torque is directly proportional to the external resistance if you want to have a high starting torque application better go for slipper ring or wound type rotor if you require very low starting torque you can go for squirrel case type but uh, when you require high starting torque it is always better to go for the slipper ring type uh, rotor fine so please refer the particular diagram then we can explain very easily the slipper ring can be the open ends of the star winding. This is the open ends of the star winding uh, are brought out and connected to three insulated slipper ring. See the rotor winding that is connected to the three slipper rings and which is mounted on the shaft of the rotor because rotor is a moving part with the carbon brushes for collecting, collecting the uh, air power. Okay, we have the carbon brushes. Moreover, uh, the rotor winding can be shorted through the external variable resistance. So, depends on the starting torque, you can add more number of resistance. Furthermore, uh, the motor with this type of rotor is termed as uh, the slipper in type induction motor. In slippering induction motor, we can go for a high starting torque. But the problem is you are adding more number of resistance. As the number of resistance are very high, the efficiency, what about the efficiency? The overall efficiency comes down. If you compare the efficiency of squirrel cage induction motor with a slippering induction motor, the efficiency of the slippering induction motor is uh, very, uh, the slippering induction motor is very less. Okay. But advantage is you can easily control the speed of induction motor. Okay. And also the starting torque can be very much high. It can be used for different uh, high starting torque application. A few applications like crane. If you want to have a crane, definitely to lift the object, we require high starting torque then conveyors for the movement also the lift moreover electric vehicle induction motor can be used for electric vehicle such cases slippering induction motors are most convenient 